All right, and so I'm gonna make a video here showing how to do a histogram on your TI-84. So um, we did histograms by hand, and it's much easier by hand because we can draw out a scale and use our intervals and our frequencies to construct our, our, our histogram, right? So it looks kind of like this, and we would have our, our end values for all of our intervals listed. So five, 10, 15, and so on. And then we would mark our frequencies along the vertical axis. And so we'd have 10, and these bars would be adjoining and butting up nicely. And then this one would be 13, and so on and so forth. But what if we wanted to use our graphing calculators to do this? So it's easy and it's hard as well too. Previously, when we were calculating averages, we would have taken the mid interval value. So what's halfway between zero and exactly five? So 2.5 would be our mid interval value here, 7.5 for this one. So let's go ahead and make a stat list. So we'll go by pressing stat and go into our edit. And you can see I've got some of this data copied in already. Um, but instead of L1 being our actual L1 values, um, I'm gonna do our mid interval values. So I'm gonna do 2.5, 7.5, 12.5, 17.5, not 18.5, 22.5, and 27.5. So now I've got my data, my, my, my horizontal data, my mid-interval values in L1, and my vertical data, my frequencies in L2. And I'll go to uh, second function, stat plot. So I have to type in second function to get into my stat plot menu. So it's under the Y equals button. And I'll turn on stat plot one. I do that by pressing the enter button at the bottom of the calculator. I have to make sure that on is highlighted and I'm gonna go select my type. So I'm gonna select the histogram here. Now it gives us options for our X list and our frequency. So we can set up a frequency list and an X list. I have my mid interval values stored in L1. So I'll put my frequencies in L2. So I'll just second function two to bring up L2 and I should be able to construct my histogram. However, we're gonna see a problem pretty quickly. Um, but before, before we do that, usually we like to start off by doing zoom and stat so that we can go to our statistic zoom. So that's a zoom nine. And this will illuminate the problem. When I do zoom nine, you'll see that we have what looks like the start of my histogram as I had had before here. Um, but then we have this gap. And these gaps are a direct result of an issue with our window. So if we go and check our window, it's an issue with our X scale. So our X scale and our X minimum and our X maximum don't line up. So if we were to change those so that they did line up, so we go from 2.5 to 32.5 and our X scale being five, that should actually make the graph look a little bit better. And in this case, you can see that that kind of very clearly puts our histogram back together. So I'll show you that fix again. We go to window, we set the minimum as our bottom, or sorry, as our, our first mid interval value, and we set the maximum as the next mid interval value. So not 27.5, but as 32.5, the one just above. And that's that, that way we can get all the way up to that range of, of 30. Now our X scale is going to be our interval sizes. So how big are the width of those bins that our data is being observed within. So that's one way to fix that. And we'll see what that fix looks like. We'll just go back to the graph. But suppose you really didn't care about the horizontal scale. You just wanted to see the shape of the frequencies so that you could make a prediction as to whether, you know, it was more right, um, right biased or more left biased. Then what we would end up doing for that case, we'll go back into stat. And instead of typing in our mid interval values, let's just type in bin sizes of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Because if we're just looking for the comparison of frequencies, we don't really care about that horizontal scale as much. So now we'll go back and we'll graph that again. We'll go into second function stat plot and we'll go plot one on and we'll just make sure we've got our X list is L1 and our frequency list is L2 and uh, we're all ready to go. So I'm gonna press zoom and stat once again and oh my God, problem. The same problem occurred, those gaps between those observations. So I'll go back to window, but this time it's much easier for me to correct this. I don't have to play around with guesses. I know that my, my values are one and six because I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
So I'll just go from my minimum of one to my maximum of seven, one above my, uh, my top interval. And I'll set my X scale to one because I know that my bars are all, uh, my, my intervals are all one unit apart. So I'll go back into graph and we'll see that we have the problem fixed and it generates the exact same graph we had had before. Uh, so this is how to create a histogram using your TI-84.